हेलो दिस इज डॉक्टर महेश कल्याण शेट्टी असोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग वालचंद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर इन दिस सेशन वील डिस्कस अबाउट द एनालिसिस ऑफ स्वे फ्रेम यूजिंग स्टिफनेस मेथड the learning outcome will be at the end of this session students will be able to analyze and draw a bending moment diagram of sway frame using stiffness method let us consider one example so in this frame the loading is not symmetric even though the support conditions are symmetric the geometry is symmetric but the loading is not symmetric therefore it will lead to sway therefore the given problem is a sway frame for the analysis of this sway frame we shall use this stiffness equation ad equal to adl plus s into d where ad is the action force in the direction of deformations in the original structure adl is the action force in the direction of deformations due to loading in kinematically determinate structure s is the stiffness matrix and d is the deformation matrix to begin with first of all we shall calculate the degree of kinematic indeterminacy for that all the possible deformations at the node points are to be determined so here in this problem if i uh, consider the deform shape uh, it will be like this which is shown in the red color so the rotation at b is possible rotation at c is possible and also there is a sway possible towards right because of the 10 kN load so let us write this dki is 3 theta b theta c and delta so let us assume theta b as clockwise theta c as anti clockwise and delta that is sway towards right and let us designate all these uh, unknowns as d1 d2 and d3 then let us find ad matrix so ad is the action force in the direction of deformations so in the origin structure we don't have any force in the direction of uh, theta b we don't have any force in the direction of theta c however we have a force in the direction of sway that is 10 kN therefore ad1 will be zero ad2 will be zero and ad3 is present and that too it is positive because it is in the direction of sway so the ad matrix is developed then adl matrix for that we have to make all the spans fixed because we want the kinematically determinate structure therefore let us make all the spans fixed and find the fixed end moment and uh, the moments in the direction of the redundants we will consider as the coefficients here so this will be a fixed end moment so it is there for only horizontal member bc which is subjected to a load of 10 kN so at b there is a moment adl1 we call it as because it is in the direction of first redundant and at c there is a clockwise moment we call it as adl2 because it is in the direction of second redundant and in the direction of third redundant if any force is there that we shall consider adl3 but in our case we don't have any inclined load we don't have any horizontal reaction present at b or c therefore adl3 left and adl3 right both are zero so let us write the values adl1 is uh, uh, pl by 8 and this we have consider as minus because uh, this uh, moment at b is anti clockwise however rotation at b we assumed as clockwise and adl2 also is minus because uh, the rotation at c we consider anti clockwise but the moment at c is clockwise in nature and uh, adl3 of course is zero so we got the adl matrix minus 5 minus 5 and 0 before we proceed further let us take a review question the first question sway is produced in the frame due to the four options are given you have to identify the correct one the second question is horizontal reaction produced at the support of vertical member due to sway in the frame is again four options are given so think over it take a pause and resume the video these are the answers the sway is produced in the frame because of all these options a b c because the sway is possible due to asymmetry in the loading sway is possible due to asymmetry in the support conditions sway is also possible due to asymmetric geometry horizontal reaction produced at support of vertical member due to sway is 12 ia delta by l cube because the moments are 6 ia delta by l square and after applying the equilibrium equation at the support we get the reaction as 12 ia delta by l cube 
let us continue the stiffness matrix is to be determined and for that we have to apply the uh, rotations in the direction of redundant one by one the first action is apply unit rotation in the direction of theta b which will look like this so you can see at b we have applied the unit uh, rotation and for that we have to apply a moment of fourier by l so the coefficients will be s11 r for bc span and l for ba span and the carryover is possible from b to c that is half of the moment 2 a by l and also from b to a half that is 2 a by l so we can find the coefficient s11 which is a summation of left and right component which is 4 a by l which comes out to be 2.333 and s21 is this moment which is clockwise and the rotation at c we have zoomed anti clockwise therefore this is to be taken as minus 0.5 ei and in the direction of third redundant there is a reaction possible that we call it as s31 so here the reaction is possible since we apply the equilibrium equation for the member ab if i take a summation of moment about a and equate it to 0 then this reaction works out to be 6 ei by l square so s31 we get 6 ei by l square that is minus 0.666 and negative sign because this reaction is in the opposite direction of the sway in this way the first column of the matrix is to be determined then the second action is the apply unit rotation in the direction of theta c which will look like this at c you can see here the rotation is uh, given in uh, anti clockwise direction and again the moments we need 4 ei by l and the carryover is possible again from C to B 2 A by L which will be S12 because it is in the direction of first redundant due to second action and S22 left and right we can write. So S12 is minus 0.5 because here again at B we have an anti clockwise moment and rotation at B we assumed clockwise therefore it is minus 0.5 and S22 is the left component plus right component after substitution we get 2.333 and S32 again is present here because if I consider the vertical member uh, CD and uh, if I take a summation of moment of all the forces about this bottom point D, we get the reaction here as 6 C I by L square which will be S32 that is it, it is in the direction of third redundant due to second action. And it is positive because it is acting towards right and sway also is considered to be towards right side. So this gives me a second column of matrix. Then the third action is apply a unit sway in the direction of delta. So this will be the diagram corresponding to that. So you can see at B and C the sway is given towards right and when you provide a sway there will be a moment produced at the support and the sway is causing the span to rotate in clockwise direction therefore the fixed end moments are produced in anti clockwise direction at AB as well as at CD and this moment is always equal to 6 C R delta by L square here also 6 C R by L square so at all the point A, B, C and D the moment is 6 C R delta by L square and as a result of these two moments the horizontal reaction is present at B and you can see at B horizontal reaction will be uh, causing the clockwise rotation the actual moments are anti clockwise but the reactions are forming the clockwise moment 12 ei by l cube so this 12 ei by l cube we get after applying the equilibrium equation on this vertical member here also member cd we get the horizontal reaction as 12 ei by l cube so let us write the value s12 uh, sorry s13 is minus so s13 is a minus because you can see S13 is anti clockwise and rotation at B we assumed clockwise, therefore it is minus. S23 is anti clockwise and rotation at C is clockwise, therefore it is positive. And S33 is the, the left component and right component because the horizontal reaction is developed at B as well as at C. So at B we call it as a left component and at C we call it as right component. So let us take a summation of both we get this value as 0.888 EI. So this gives me a complete stiffness matrix 3 by 3 since we have 3 degree of kinematic invariancy. So after getting this we shall write the stiffness equation and let us substitute all the values 
which we determine. So unknown here are only theta b, theta c and delta. So after simplifying we get d1 as 6.828 upon ei, we are getting this positive, it means that our assumption is correct, so therefore it is clockwise. Theta 2, uh, sorry d2 or theta c I am getting negative, it means that the assumption is wrong, we initially we assumed uh, theta c as uh, anti-clockwise, but uh, I am getting the answer as negative, therefore it is actually clockwise. And d3 I am getting positive, it means that sway is taking place towards right and magnitude is 17.403 upon ei. So after getting this, we can tentatively draw the actual deformed shape with reference to the obtained values. So you can see at B clockwise rotation, at C also clockwise rotation and simultaneously the sway is taking place towards right. Then we shall find the end moments using the stiffness uh, slope deflection equation. So this is a slope deflection equation we use. So let us substitute all the values, FEM AB is 0, then length of AB is 3 meter theta a is 0, theta b is uh, known to us, uh, clockwise rotations and clockwise moments are taken positive and anti-clockwise rotations and anti-clockwise moments are taken negative. So let us substitute it, we get the value as minus 7.05, then m b a also is calculated in the same way, we get it as minus 2.498, so m b c will be of course same with opposite sign and remaining moments are determined using the same slope deflection equation. Then the free body diagram we can uh, show here with respect to the moments, if the moment is posit uh, positive we show it clockwise otherwise it is anti-clockwise and at the end we can draw the bending moment diagram by superimposition theory. So this is the bending moment diagram. These are the references used for this presentation. Thank you.